This is Tully Dio and Madman Matt sitting next to me per usual. And we are the hosts of the Tully Dio Show. I thought I was always a good wingman. I wake up when uh, my eyes open. Because you know rock and roll stays up late. It's like if you're drinking the big beers, then I think there should be a certain level of cheer that you get from that. So like Walt's drinking the big beers, you should feel more cheerful. Unless you're a sad drunk and no one likes that. Yeah, no one wants that. Los Angeles, we're pumping it out to the people, you know? It's the hot stuff. This is where, this place is boiling with, with, you know what I mean? Everybody wants something new in LA. And it is time for some new rock and roll. It is so time. Dio show with me, Telly Dio. You're gonna chip in on that? No, not man. Get it? Not today. Madman Matt. All right, there we Mad go. Man, I'll do it for you. Madman Matt. It is 225, episode 314, and this is your set list. It is a killer. It goes up and down and around and around like a roller coaster. It's like Leatherface, right? Yeah, Did exactly. You Did you see the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No. No, I, I didn't either. Why would I do that? I don't know. No, I wouldn't. I there wouldn't is do only it. one. There's only one. Don't remake those. I saw the Amityville Horror one. It was weak. It was weak. The 70s one is terrifying. It is. <sighs> it's because of part of the way they shot stuff back then. Brolin? I don't know what it is. Brolin? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, they on. threw Brolin in everything. No, that was Reynolds was Amityville. No, I knew the new one, but the old one. You can't beat that. No, guy. you can't. You and, can't. And, uh, you know, you what's can't. Your name? You know. Yeah, What's your? It doesn't matter. It, <laughs> the point is, if there's horror movies made in the '70s, they're scarier than the horror movies made in the 2000s. Stop remaking that shit. Don't do it. Stop Creative it. ideas only. Only. If you lose your job, that's just what happens. But you got to take risks on the good movies. Yeah. We need the new creative shit. We can't have this old remake shit anymore. It's ridiculous. It's all Marvel movies. That's the only thing that's a hit anymore. It's a great PSA. That was my PSA. There you go. It's for art. It's just, an art PSA. Just give Jordan Peele, just give him the, the ball. Let yeah, him run. Let just him... give him a camera and some money and tell him to make stuff. That's some new stuff. I think that's what they do now. Him and J.J. Abrams. That's yeah, all they do. Cool those too. two, basically. He's just cool those too. two. Yeah. You know? The pin pricks bait and then pin finger. Yeah, I meant to do that. With bootlicker. Right now, the Tully Dio Show. Well, the pin. Too cold and deep The bait was just too sweet I'm waiting for the flood So was my muddy blood My muddy blood The endless sea lay dark Beware the lonely shark
heavy for a while here. Does it? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. And then it goes, and then it goes back down. It goes up, and then it goes back down. But all whilst being entertaining. There we go. That's all that really matters, That's right? All that matters. Stolen moans falling into and riotous indignation, lords of war. This is when it gets hard. Get them chainsaws out. Lords of war. You know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. You can already picture it. Wow. Hatchets. Hatchets. Skulls. Swords. Chainsaws, shields. Swords. War. Ke- Kevlar vests. Yes. No, we're, we're, no, done. Well, now it's, we're done. We're done. The commas are done. Chain mail. All day. Renaissance fairs. Frozen Italian ice. <laughs> Turkey legs. A little, a little quail. I'm ruining it. I'm taking the quail. heat out of the track now. I'm taking the heat way out of the track. No, no, you it's got it. Lords of War.
indignation you got to say it slow or you're gonna f it up dude i know i know it, lords of war and stolen moans falling into big jim's wild card this week big jim yeah big jim's wild card yeah there it is is ascara with hibernation Dig on this, man. Whip myself in the neck. I know you got did yourself a little little uh, Harrison Ford. Yeah, didn't I that missed, how he got his divot on his chin? The chin, though, isn't that how he did it? Yeah, or is that just a urban That's tale? Just River Phoenix, you know, he he got punched in the face. But is that an urban well, tale about him getting whipped in the face with a whip? No, that, was, that was a thing. Oh, yeah, they're dangerous. Jones, man, kids out there, come on. Don't use, don't just go up to your dad's cabinet and grab his whip and think you can go outside and start whipping shit with Isn't it. That a goddamn lion tamer. Listen, it's dangerous. Okay. Even with Spielberg and Lucas on set, Harrison Ford whipped his own fucking chin. You know, it. you know, that guy was messing around just because he's good with a hammer. He's a, you know, good old carpenter doesn't mean he's good with whipping. People get a little cocky with the whip and the boomerang. Yeah, people get their hands on an Australian boomerang and they think all of a sudden they know how to throw a boomerang. All it does is go up in a tree or come back and hit your friend in the face. It's best to not just throw that some bitch. You can't be just chucking those things around. Put that thing on the wall. Tell everybody you got it from Australia and you're a big shot. Don't start, don't start throwing it though. Yeah. yeah you just no. don't, you don't got the skill level. No, it takes, it takes a little bit. Ascara, hibernation, big Jim's wild card.
Oscara hibernation. Big Jim's wild card. <laughs> I gotta keep Ouch. It. I gotta keep doing it. Oh. Now this is where the show, because the show's doing now. It's getting a little bit more rocky here. If you've noticed, it's gonna start flowing into a rock vibe. Oh, rock, rock Wrong and roll. Rock. Wrong rock. What okay. were you doing? I was doing the Rocky Balboa. Theme song. Oh, I thought you were gonna do the rock. Yeah. The the rock says. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know he I ripped all that ball. stuff off, you know, off of everybody. Isn't that a disappointment when you Wait. find out that he stole all of his cool lines from, from like Ron Simmons. from Ron Simmons, who probably was sitting in the back room talking to the Bush League wrestlers like, know your role and shut your mouth. Yeah. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then he and then he does it and it gets a huge pop. Yeah. It gets all over. And it was Simmons the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. See, you don't know what's behind the curtain. That's true. You just don't know. We're peeling back the curtain. Peeling it back slowly, revealing, revealing the ins and outs and the ups and downs of the wrestling business. It's not even the show. It's not. We just throw in our two cents every once in a while on that. We're smart marks. Come on, smart mark. Vancouver Drive, never felt this way before. And the Black Widow conspiracy, this ain't no love song, right? Let's throw the perennials on there too. Or perennials, when skies are melting right now. Episode 314. Moonlit the night sky Held you close by my side Looks like we made it
perennials when skies are melting the black widow conspiracy this ain't no love song and vancouver drive never felt this way before those are some good like classic rock and roll style songs damn everyone has the coolest names they really you know if you think it out if you think it out you're gonna come up with a band name that's really dope but you can't just jump on it you might just think that and don't get too weird with it that is some good brainstorming. You got to think guys. of something that people want to chant. That's right. If they can't say your name, they can't chant your name. See, good one-on-one right there. Starting a band. Listen to Tilly say, Listen, You know what I mean? Yeah. I listen to a lot of music, and I sit there in my head, and I'm like, if I was at this concert, what was I going to chant? You're right. Yeah. You got to you gotta give me something like Pinfinger. Great chanting name. Here we go. Great chanting name. The Just Imagines Sweet Explosions and Flint, we just played Flint a couple of weeks ago, but he sent me a couple and it's amazing stuff. Flint with colors right now. Toy Deal Show.
That is your set list for 225. We'll be back with more right after this break. There's a break now. So just get a beer. Fill your beer. Oh, yeah. This is Zach Rohn from Mason Gold. And I watched the Tully Dio show with Madman Matt Berlinski. This is Brody. And you should fucking watch this show, too. I love you. It's time for Tully Talks. This and here's guy. the thing. I'm going to talk about some stuff. So earlier when, during the set list, we were talking about The Rock and uh, how he ripped off the catchphrases from the uh, Simmons and the Sheik Iron, was jabroni. Sheik. Yeah, yeah. By the way, if you if you get a chance, follow the Iron Sheik yeah. on Twitter. It's going to. He's going to make you humble. He writes in all capitals and he's just like absolutely brutal. Hates Hulk Hogan. Hates Hulk Hates Hogan. Him. Why? Oh, I, I know why. Because, okay. you know, because Hulk Hogan was the was the golden boy and he was better than him. Make you make you humble. Break your back. He could break your back. I'm, I'm, I'm just being nice. That guy was so strong. So the thing is, you know, those guys, they got the they got the uh, the phrases and they would just go out there and just try to get stuff over like try to get stuff for the crowd to react to. And he, the rock took all his, but the thing is, could Ron Simmons have delivered it the way the rock does. Right. Charisma. 
Mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not... sure in the back room he was really good at telling people to know their role and shut their mouth. But in, on state, on the, in the in the actual ring, that's true. could he do it? Because The Rock could. Yeah, that's the thing. And you could tell him like five seconds, hey, Brock, go do this, and he'd go do it. So as much as he ripped everybody off, the thing is, would have just been a back room thing if he wouldn't have said it in the front? Good point. Probably. Yeah. Stone Cold used to just straight up come up with things and then go out there in front of how many people? He was an improv 15,000, 10,000, whatever. Complete, complete improv guy. And yeah. just say stuff. Like that whole what thing was just a conversation him and Christian had yeah. another wrestler, Christian Cage, or yeah, just no. Christian. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, he left um, the voicemail, right? He's yeah. Like, hey, what? He's he just saying shit. what? And then what? <laughs> and he just kept doing it to him until he was doing it annoyingly until it got over. Hey, and like, back? what? Yeah. And like, so all that stuff was just them coming up, doing improv stuff yep. and then doing it. It's not like Vince was back there writing it. It's not like, uh, what's it? Who would the guy just passed away? He wasn't writing anything for him, you know? Uh, oh, um, Canadian wrestler. Who just passed away. Yeah. He passed away a couple of months. Uh, Pete, not Pete. Um, what was his name? The, the he was Vince's right hand man forever. Oh, Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson, yeah, greatest, amazing wrestler, intercontinental champion of all time. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe the honky tonk man. Yeah. Who oh, also ripped it. his stuff off from Elvis? Yeah, he ripped off Elvis. The thing is, they're just trying to come up with characters. Blue suede shoes. Like, come Jap- on. like, or how about like in Japan? It's way more like it's obvious. Oh yeah. They're ripping off like a movie or whatever. But over here, they're just ripping off people's lines, which. If you can sell it, you know what I mean? I'd rather have someone take someone else's line and have a good sell that makes everybody entertained and laugh than have it just be sitting dead in the back room with no one out there doing it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I don't yeah. know what the point of this Tully Talks is. I All like I it. know is I love wrestling. <laughs> and, like, it's fun to know the backstory behind some well, of this stuff. Also, it's, it's current. We just watched the Super Bowl. The right. Rock introduced. So, that right. was, you know, that's still fresh in our minds. Like our hero as a, you know, in the, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. Was the rock in the attitude. Era. Who is your favorite guy in the attitude era? Ah, uh, Stone Cold. Me too. I, every day I watch him. I know me too. <laughs> he was so over and he was so like the, 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 the working man's guy. He was a psychotic person. And like that, that's the thing. Oh, he's a working man. He's beating up his boss. He's a sociopath. Yeah, he was. <laughs> that's was gimmick. Yeah, yeah. He was, was supposed great. to be a stone cold killer. Yeah, what's well, seriously like he took Richard Kuklinski's right. Yeah, uh, whole dynamic from the HBO documentary and his 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 uh, his ex wife at the time was drinking. And she's from England and she was drinking. What is that's the whole tea? Day. She's drinking tea. She's like, you better drink your tea. It's getting stone cold. Yep. Oh, thanks, thanks, babe. That's a great story. That's amazing. And he's like, okay, I'm just going to watch HBO. And he watches the, the Iceman. And he literally Chronicles. got, he got so over. That guy struggled his whole career. Mm-hmm. And then he hit that stone cold. I don't even know how old he was, but he didn't get over till then. And he he's got like, over forever. 36 years old. Yeah, he must have been. You know? And he got so over Maybe. that like still today, people are begging him to wrestle again. Yeah, they One more match. literally want him to get there. Gonna- but he just won't do it. He's a he's a stubborn man. He likes his beer and his in his ranch. His ranch that's all he wants to do. That's all. And do his show with iced tea and like yeah. Tiffany Haddish. Which yeah, is really cool. You Have know, you that's his thing. No, it's really funny. He's I'm just, gonna like, check it out. Shoots shotguns at like ice sculptures with iced tea. It's insane. I'm in. <laughs> you gotta watch it. Sounds like a great show. Yeah, it's really good. Tully talks, episode three fourteen. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know why it's that be a thing. That's, no, it can be. We don't have the sound thing. Is that the... No farts. <laughs> let's keep it a little uh, mature. Yeah. No, a let's classy. not. Let's not. not. No, let's, do, let's just put it in a dumper. Let's not. <laughs> that man moment. Playdioshow.com. It's a man. A man. You know what makes me mad? I... Everything! Your damn microwave! This printer makes me mad. Oh my god! Damn! I mean, I pay $30 for these things. God damn it. Oh, it's open. Oh, cool. Oh no, another door. God damn it. God damn it. 
Oh, look, it's open. It's open. Damn, damn it. To hell. To hell. To hell. Everything makes me mad. Uh, you know, look at the beautiful clouds in the sky. I stop and go. Man on the flying trapeze, the double trapeze, that time warp, and then around the universe. Stop! Yeah! Ooh, Fast Eddie McDonald is on the show. Oh, look at that. Oh. He's got the Fast Eddie yo. You got to send us a Fast Eddie yo yo. I will. I love it. Cool. So, Fast Eddie, now I got a million questions for you. So, we'll try to keep it fast. Sure, brother. Talk to me first about, because you're a Guinness World Record holder. Yeah. I always wanted to get in that book. I never had enough of a certain skill to get in. I would try to eat the most peanuts. I tried everything. I couldn't get into the book. <laughs> what do you hold? What records do you hold currently? So I hold three. One is for the most tricks in a single hour. And it's almost 9,000. It was like 2.5 a second. Whoa, dude. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I had a sore finger at the end of that. <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, three hours. I did uh, the most in three hours, almost 22,000 tricks. I did that in Boston, Mass at Faneuil Hall there. And then the most different tricks in uh, a single minute. It has to return to your hand every time. And I did uh, 35 tricks in a minute. Whoa. Speaking of the Guinness Book, you know how much money you get for getting in there? What? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Not even like a mug of beer or something? Nothing, nothing. But, yeah, man, I, I've performed in like 30 countries around the world. So yeah. it, it played out. You know, it worked out. It was cool. It gives you the heat. Like, people yeah. know that book, man. When I was yeah, a kid, every year I bought the new version, like four things had changed, but I still bought it. Yeah, me too, man. And that, that was the attraction to it, you know? Yeah, it was cool, man. Cool. Saw a lot of places, saw a lot of things, a lot of people. It was re really, really crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. How did you how did you even decide that this was the thing? I mean, I'm sure you had a pogo stick. You didn't go that route. I'm yeah. sure you had a hula hoop. No, did. You didn't go that well, route. You know, I'm going to tell you the true story. Yeah. You know, growing up in uh, Canada, um, every dad wants their son to be an NHL hockey player. You know, it. Oh yeah. so uh, by the time I was 12, I was playing hockey like four times a week, five times a week. And to be perfectly honest, it felt like a job. Yeah. And the yo-yo was kind of me, uh, you know, pushing back on my dad. And it was something I picked. And I remember uh, I got asked. I was sponsored by Coca-Cola for a long time. Oh, wow. Years. Yeah. And the first time they came calling, they wanted to send me to Japan. 16 years old. And my dad goes, oh, you can't go. This is your draft year, man. You're going to the NHL. I was like, I don't want to go to the NHL, but my mom, my mom pushed for me. And that was the beginning of it, man. That was the beginning of uh, my yo-yo career. Went to Japan, toured Japan for almost three months. Wow. Oh. Yeah. At yeah. 16? Yeah. Man, you must have felt like a rock star. Uh, yeah, that's really a good point. I mean, you go to Japan at 16 where Coca-Cola, you think Coca-Cola is big in America. Holy God, it was huge in these countries. And, um, you know, buses and billboards and TV before we got there. So once we got there, it was it was a big deal. Yeah, it's cool, man. You were getting the Beatles treatment a little bit from time to time. Seriously. I, I mean, like they to. love stuff like I know I've seen like clips of like people going over to Japan and stuff and they freak out over American oh, and Canadian entertainment. They really do. You know, it's interesting around the world, like uh, Brazil, you go to Rio or Tokyo or that's more American than America. You know, they want it so bad, you know, the way they're dressing, you see those kids doing uh, 50s and 60s music in Japan. And Rio was very, very similar, man, very Americanized. And uh, yeah, it's cool, though, man. I bet. I mean, you got to yeah. travel the world doing your favorite thing. That's amazing. You actually did. You got bigger than the NHL because a lot of people can get to the NHL. How many people can hold three world records? <laughs> Yo yo. Uh, yeah, the only daddy. thing that didn't follow was uh, income, man. Well, that's it. You know, they, with <laughs> yeah. art, 
<laughs> Usually with art, sometimes income doesn't follow. No, uh, it didn't. It didn't. But you're right, though, man. I, I did. It. I smiled a lot. Had a lot. Of I good bet. Yeah, would your really dad? Crazy. Would your pop think of that when they when you're blowing up the Guinness and everything? Well, yeah. At first, uh, it was rough. I came back from Japan, and the trophy case was put away. Ooh. Oh, so it was a little yeah, back dig. You want to play? He goes, if you want to play hockey now, you can drive yourself. It was over for him. And you're like, good. I'm done. I got my yo-yos. Yeah, well, man, that's it. Yeah. Coca-Cola I'm going on says, tour, dude. Yeah, so, I'm uh, literally on tour, Dad. I'm on yeah. tour. So it so, took a while, but uh, yeah, he was proud. He was proud. Oh, of me. He, I mean, come yeah. on. How could you not? Like anybody, anytime anybody can get to the top of the mountain and whatever they yeah. do, it's so yeah. impressive. You, you can't deny it. It's just because it wasn't in what he wanted doesn't mean it wasn't mega. It was such I an epic him, accomplishment. Though, I, not yeah. a good point. Sorry yeah. There. Um, yeah, it was a good point. And I, and I needed the hockey kind of negative experience to really drive me, you know? Sure. I, I literally played till my fingers bled, you know, that's what. Yeah. It yeah. Speaking yeah. of played till your fingers bled now, what type I noticed I was looking at your clips because why wouldn't you? They're amazing. Yeah. Um, and you did one to the Benny Hill, <laughs> Benny yeah. Hill theme, which is like my favorite. I can't even listen to that without laughing. Yeah. What type of like, what type of music do you dig? Like, do you listen to music when you're yo-yoing? Do you do oh, yeah, like, man. what do you, you dig? Know, yeah, I mean, you know, like I like classic rock, man. Yeah, that, that's what I grew up with. We listen uh, to some Rush. That's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. I was just Canadian, listening to it today. There you go. You know, I like Rush. Like Tommy, Tommy Gunn. There it yeah. is. <laughs> but I, uh, you know, classic rock and roll, man. Absolutely, any of it. And something new. I'm into Greta. You know, Greta Van, Van Fleet. Fleet. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they sound like classic rock. They do, man. They sound. They do. They absolutely. He even. Yeah. Does he ever he even looks? It. Uh, and then, and then my buddies. You know, they. My buddies like heavy metal, man. Like you, you boys do. And uh, so, almost any of that. Yeah, it's good because yeah. you got it. You got to have the music while you're. It probably helps with the rhythm of what you're doing too. Oh, it does. Know? It does. Yeah. That and a couple of treats and some good music and the yo-yo oh. and I'm gone for hours, brother. Couple of a couple of labats. Yeah. A couple of Molson triple X. Yeah. Tommy <laughs> always joke, you joke around about the Molson triple X. You drank yeah. one of those. It was game over. We didn't even have IPAs back then. Oh, no. We drank Molson's yeah. and we liked uh, it. And we liked it. In Canada, we take a uh, Molson export, which was like an incredibly harsh beer. And if you were going to a house party, that's what you brought. Because you knew no one would touch it. So nice. You to steal your beer. You got to bring that's ours was like Keystone Light, yeah. Bush yeah. Light. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Natty Light. Cool. The natural light was natural light is literally the worst beer I've ever had in my life. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get them for a sponsor, but oh, that's yeah. the that's what we oh. say. Literally the worst beer ever. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I drank is. some Go Sam ahead. Adams that made me feel a little weird. Oh, fight. yeah, because it's a little thick. Yeah, there's a, a lot of thick. flavors, man. I've never seen so many flavors of beer. I know. What's your favorite of all the tricks that you do? And I know you got yeah. one. What's your yeah. favorite one? And why? But why, Eddie? Why? I, uh, You're getting deep in your head now, man. Yeah, I know. I'm there. <laughs> I, uh, I put a coin on someone's ear sticking out this way. You guys got video of it. And from a distance, bang, I knocked the coin off. It took forever, ever to learn how to do it and be comfortable with it. But that's the one. And I, my brother helped me with that. I one. was going to say, yeah. who did you get to stand there? It had to be a family member. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. So that one, man. He's got a patch now. <laughs> one ear. Yeah. He blasted his ear off. Whatever. <laughs> worth it. Worth <laughs> it. Hey, yeah. He's got all. Uh, yeah. He's he's uh, he's done well himself. He's got yo-yos. Uh, Yo-yo's for life, that guy. Oh, he's he does the yo-yoing too? No, shit, no. Oh, no. Yeah, why yeah, would no, you? I was going to no. say, like, when your nah. brother's you, I'd be like, I got to nah. do something else like being an accountant. <laughs> no. Nah. I'm going to be an accountant, so it's like something better. What do you got What do you got coming up next? You got you you're doing any tours? You got, yeah. like, television shows? What do you got yeah. coming up? Yeah, I did a couple of books. So uh, if you look out there uh, under Fast Eddie uh, McDonald's, you can see uh, yo-yo trick books and that kind of thing. And right now I'm doing uh, a life story. So I got a ghostwriter. We're doing a life story and uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, aside, it's a bit, um, 
it's a bit of rock and roll because you know on all these tours i went on lots of crazy things happened man i bet lots of crazy things like i was in brazil here we go and uh arrive at this uh arrive at this variety store can't can't see the variety store for the people thousands of people there at a variety store and they bring over a flatbed for me to get on perform on this flatbed i do the show and i leave and the car has been broken into oh so i oh and i had a briefcase briefcase is open and in the top of the briefcase is like 500 cash american passport plane tickets and in the bottom of the briefcase is 12 yo-yos that's all they took. That's it. That's it, man. The craze, they're so big. The craze is so nuts. Yeah. They, they went, that's all they went for. They didn't, they didn't care about anything else. They took these 12 yo-yos. It's nuts. I've Were seen they signed or anything? Pardon? Yeah. What yo-yos oh. do you use? Oh, well, I use a fast Eddie, bro. You got your own. Yeah, yeah, man. Because it said fast Eddie on it. That is sick. Yeah, those are killer. And then um, I, I saw the biggest yo-yo craze I ever saw in my life was in Norway. Population like 4 million people sold more than a million yo-yos in five months. Wow. So it was like more than one in every household. It was just like. Now, did you, when you were doing the yo-yo, this is your design. I mean, obviously a yo-yo looks like a yo-yo, but I'm sure that's yeah. much more complex than that. Like, did yeah. you like, did, was it like a balance thing and all that? Like a tennis yeah. racket? Or to like give a, you yeah. a feel for it. So right now, technology has also entered the world of yo-yo. So you can right. buy a yo-yo that you throw to sleep and not exaggerating nine minutes. And then it'll return. You can go to the washroom, come back and pull it up. Wow. Where I'm a traditionalist, the center of this is wood. Okay. Oh, okay. So I started with a one piece wooden yo-yo, but the weights and things really vary with wood. And this is plastic, so it's perfect every time. But the center is made of wood. That's nice. Perfect. Yeah, man. Nice. So tell the people you're because before on the as we go out, you got to do some shit. You got to do some yeah, mad will, tricks. Will. But will, first, before it. we go, tell the yeah. people where they can check out your videos, uh, yeah. buy yo-yos, do all that stuff, because, Thanks, you know, man. we want to make sure they get the good stuff. Thanks. Bro. And do you teach? Yeah. Do you do thank any you, lessons? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, online. Can reach out to me. We do that online. Yeah, through Zoom. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and give we, the people the information, and then we'll watch you just go. Cool, man. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, the best place to get a hold of me, uh, youtubecom slash talks. I spell Eddie with a Y. So, uh, Fast Eddie Talks or Fast Eddie Talks at Yahoo.ca. Come see me. Check me out. I'm going to show you guys some stuff. Yes. If you're not, if you're if you're not watching this, get on YouTube right now and check out Fast Eddie. He's going mad with the yo-yos. They're the Fast Eddie. He's got. He's, you can check out the, our website, the TullyDioShow.com. Fast Eddie, thank you so much for being on, and we will talk you to you it. soon, my brother. Later, Later, man. Look at that. It's so fast. He's going. Yeah. It's like so fast. And there's the Fast yeah, Eddie yeah, yo-yo. Yeah. Later, brother. It's the end of the show, but the start of the top effing 10. Oh. Yes. So the top effing 10, there's always uh, movement. There's always things happening because you guys are going on to the Tully Dio show, the show dot com and voting. We're voting. And then I'm tallying them up and I'm adjusting the list accordingly. That's right. Yeah. That That's was right. hard to get out. Analytics. Riotous indignation. <laughs> See, that's how I warm up. Punch. Oh, no. Don't. What the? Fuck. Why'd you high? What are we? <laughs> volleyball? What are we playing this? volleyball on the beach this with Tom totally Cruise? And what, what is this? Bush League? What are we doing here? Yeah. You're going to high five? Was it, is, is, is Danger Zone playing in the background? <laughs> Oil uh, me up. We're going to play volleyball. Let's do it, Goose. Come on. Here's your top 10. Number 10 from last week's uh, set list is Bad Love with Tattoos entering the chart at number 10. Then, Speed of Light, Kill the Vibe. Number eight is Ben Wise, Rack and Ruin. Seven, Riot After Midnight, Yours All Night. That moved up. Berserk, Mike Check One Two. Number five is Voodoo Shakedown, Play With Fire. 
Four is Coastal Fire Department gun. Three, Psycho Positive Gummy Bear. I believe we're interviewing uh, Jane next week. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be good. She's going to talk about her books. She's got a bunch of books on Amazon, Amazon about rune stones and stuff. It's going to be great. Um, number two, Tommy Gun, Junction 66. And number one, Reality Suite, Kiss the Ring. Jersey, hey. baby. Jersey. Ring. Jersey. Enjoy the top 10. We'll have a brand new top 10 next week. Go to TullyDioShow.com and vote on that so we can keep them a moving. And submit, submit tracks to the Tully Dio Show at Gmail. Don't stop. Just submit. Never Just stop. Doing. We'll, get, them, we'll get you on, even if it takes a little while. Yeah. We'll get you on. Full time, every day. While you're there, do an MP4 for the Madman moment. You feeling mad? Yeah, get it. You know that there's a bunch of stuff out there that's making you upset. Everything, Get there. Everything. Life. So just go in there. Go to the TullyDealShow.com. Check out the ones that are there and then do your own. It'll be fun. You'll be on the show with us. It'll be great. Check it out. Hey, so anyway, hey. Toy Deal Show. Madman Mad. Man, Mad. Man. Yeah. Big beers and cheers, everybody. Drink them up. Big beers. Drink them. It's a weekend. Drink your beer. Oh, hi. It's me, Tully Dio. And I'd like to thank the people that make the Tully Dio show possible. First of all, me, Tully Dio. It's my show. Second of all, my partner in crime, Madman Matt. We got our executive producer, Amy Goldberg, and our associate producer, James Chabelle. The Tully Dio show. Two weeks? Yeah, it's been like fucking a week. We missed one week. This is that would have sucked though. I think we missed two weeks. Really. No, we didn't. It's just been one week. It's been one week. I feel like, it's I like a seen long you time like because we years. really like to fucking do the show. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the future. It's the future. I screw up every single thing I do Sometimes I tattoo words that make me think of you You told me you'd be there for everything, now I'm not sure What I'm gonna do with myself High on you till I exhale I see you holding hands with him That douchebag used to be my friend Now I'm gonna be I screw up every single thing I do Sometimes I tattoo words that make me think of you Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing but what's new Sometimes I tattoo words that make me think of you Everything I do, I gotta apologize for But I'm not sorry If I do keep acting like a fool You won't do with me anymore I'm still not sorry Maybe I'm an asshole, maybe I'm a creep I don't wanna go there, but maybe I'm a freak If you don't like who I am today Guess it's your last, I'll be okay Sometimes I screw up every single thing I do 
Sometimes I tattoo words that make me think of you Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing but what's new Sometimes I tattoo words that make me think of you
that we went down to the well Arms limping tired, heads hanging low Seeking a savior we've been promised long ago The first sip of wine was the sweetest taste A touch of something that we tried and failed to play We paid no mind, then forgot to care Hours later we were much the worse for wear And now we lie here, tied at a bruise Poison tied up, let out a fuse It'd be different now if we only knew But I dream
tell your papa who's the blues. The gummy bear.